Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here at Access Consciousness. They do extraordinary work out into the world. If you'd like to view their products, their programs, or become a facilitator, go to drdanehere.com as well as accessconsciousness.com. The Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award, and it's ranked in the top best podcasts in self-improvement in all of the USA on Apple Podcasts, as well as trending in Portugal. Thank you to those people who get this message and this path. Debbie Dashinger is a certified coach whose expertise is visibility in media. She coaches people to write a page turner book takes their book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and runs the ultimate visibility formula. She teaches you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. You can receive your free tips, tools, templates, and videos on how you can be interviewed right away at debbiedashinger.com slash message. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash message message. Are you interested in cryptozoology, paranormal activity, conspiracy, consciousness, technology, frequency, alien tie-ins? Well, then you are in the right place for the right show because my guest today is Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, who is an internationally renowned naturopathic doctor, energy healer, remote viewer, paranormal expert, and consciousness teacher. Her extensive client list includes the world's most talented healers. And for the past 25 years, Kimberly has worked on thousands of people globally. Dr. McGeorge was born with the ability to remote view, see people's auras, and was highly intuitive. While still in college, she held police on many occasions. Finding she had a natural affinity with herbs, she worked as an herbalist and went on to create and distribute her own line of herbal organic products internationally. During this time, her personal practice expanded to multiple clinics throughout Columbus. Driven by an inner knowing that her healing work could be made quicker, more affordable, and amplified using technology, Dr. Kimberly consulted with an esteemed neurosurgeon to create naturopathic healing frequencies. Her groundbreaking program, Frequency Master, teaches how to master frequencies in your life while it trains healers to use her own very unique and successful methods. You can learn more about Dr. Kimberly McGeorge at secrettoeverything.com. And with that, I welcome Dr. Kimberly McGeorge to Dare to Dream. It's so great to circle back and have you here. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So Kimberly and I knew each other, I'm sure it's 10 years ago. We hung out when the Summit World was alive and well. (laughs) And uh, we traded interviews back then. And you know, I've always had a finger on the pulse of what she was doing. She was one of the good guys, right? You know, somebody you want to watch. Um, so I'm so excited to be doing this with you and reconnected. And uh, like a lot of directions we could go. So let's just start about new. Your research with alternative health combined with energy healing fields. Can you talk about the research and discoveries you're making? Oh, goodness gracious. There's so many now. And I guess I didn't tell you this, but um, I'm actually a patent holder on a PEM, a frequency device called Halo, uh, which has been really exciting and new. And then I have two apps. Um, One is in the uh, iTunes store, Energy Master. Then there's Energy Remastered, which we call our big app. So I'm really, really, uh, since I've known you, I've really gotten into my own technology that I program and I'm involved in. And we find such interesting things because I scan so many people, um, you know, men, women, children, babies all over the world. We find so many interesting things about things like health, like Lyme, like everybody pings for Lyme, 
everybody, everybody pings for Epstein-Barr. Uh, and not only that, but then everybody pings for trauma, which is super interesting. So you think everybody in the world can't be traumatized. Where are they getting the trauma from? So then we start looking past day into what's going on at night and what's going on at night worldwide. And then we start digging into deeper and crazier things like the secret space program and my labs and all of that. And it just gets really interesting. <laughs> so I've got to, you know, we go really woo woo. Most people won't, of course, but you know, I'm woo woo. <laughs> Did you ever, so I know conspiracy was one of the words. Was there ever a time when you felt like this is conspiracy, this doesn't resonate? Or is it because you've got a real barometer and a deeper matrix understanding that you really know what's true? If I didn't see it, and if my children weren't so psychically gifted and have sight, um, you know, when we lived in Ohio, and this was 10, 15, 20 years ago, I mean, the grays would surround our house. You know, we have pictures, I mean, where a paranormal group came to my house in the kitchen window, there was a camera set up, and you can see the light come down and flash, and then you can see the gray press its head against the window, look right, look left, and then go back up. Like, when you see stuff, like, Maybe it's a CGI or whatever, or an elaborate show someone's putting on, but it's hard not to, when you have these gifted children. And then, you know, now we have these smartphones that have the capacity to kind of tie in with our psychic vision and our brainwaves and produce, as you know, amazing pictures. Mm. Yeah, we had a conversation about that. You know, you're also into cryptozoology and that is the search for and the study of animals whose existence or survival is disputed. So for example, Loch Ness Monster or the Anaconda, the Sasquatch, the Yeti. Why did you start getting into cryptozoology? Why was that important to you? I didn't want to, Debbie. <laughs> I didn't want to, please, not another crazy thing. Don't make me any crazier. You know, I've got to tell you, it's the stupidest story, but uh, you know, I'm on YouTube, I'm bored. You know, and, and you start watching a, a thing on um, how to organize your kitchen. And the next thing you know, you're watching Sasquatch videos, right? That's how YouTube <laughs> likes design to work. So I'm watching these videos and I'm like, this is boring, this is boring, this is boring. And then there was this one guy and he's like, do you see the woman? Do you see the baby? I'm like, whoa, whoa, are we talking about Sasquatch women? Are we talking about Sasquatch babies? So I like rerun the video and I'm like, okay, I need to call someone because I see the Sasquatch woman. I see the Sasquatch babies. He's a friend of mine, C. Wayne Wilson. If you want a crazy interview, have him on sometime. <laughs> he's, he's a character. But um, so I called him up and I said, hey, Wayne, you don't know me, but I watched your videos. And, and at this time, I didn't know what I know, Debbie. I thought like the Sasquatch were just at Wayne's house. So I'm like, ring, 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 can I come over and see the Sasquatch? Because, you know, that's where they live. They hang out at Wayne's house. So I go over there. And, and by the way, where does he live? He lives um, outside of Greensboro, North Carolina. And I also huh. live in North Carolina in the foothills um, okay. by um, Hanging Rock State Park. Um, but, you know, I went over there and the first thing I do is I see a baby Sasquatch swinging on the trees and they're all lined up along the field. They knew I was coming and I'm like, okay, so we're both crazy. So Wade and I are now really good friends. We've actually been in one, I was in a movie of his, um, along with my dog. And then we're actually filming a, uh, series kind of pitch series, you know, for all the big channels called a gift of sight together. So we became really amazing friends, but he gets the best pictures. And we both kind of see them the same way. We like feel them and then we turn to where they are and then we take the picture and they're there. So, um, so I, he for, well, he got me into them. And then I went back to my yard and I'm like, oh no, they're in my yard too. <laughs> and then I went downtown Winston-Salem and they're outside restaurants and they're in my house and they're out of my house and they're in my car and they're in, they're everywhere. The dimension is everywhere. All right. Now, aren't they 800 to 1200 pounds and about six to seven feet tall? Well, and here's where uh, we get into some issues. So interdimensionals, the Vedas in India tell us that there's 800 to 1,000 different types of these oh. interdimensionals. So we're just like Sasquatch dogmen, you know, <laughs> um, you know, but there's a lot more than that. There's a lot of different types. You know that there is a... Um, there is a, you've muted yourself just so you know. Um, there is a uh, dog, got it. <laughs> there is a documentary on Hulu that was produced by the Duplass brothers, who I'm a big fan of, about Sasquatch. And I started watching it actually because I wanted to prepare for you. And 
I'm not so much into the at least the first episode because I thought it was a lot of fear-based stuff about them pulling people apart. And that was never my understanding of at all of who they were, but you can weigh in. I, I was also asking about location because the first episode predominantly, this is all up in Mendocino. So that means Northern California. This is above San Francisco by Humboldt before you get into or Oregon. And of course, those mountains, that range of forest that goes all the way up the Pacific Northwest is completely, I mean, dense with some of the tallest trees, right? And apparently this Sasquatch is very relevant, very prevalent there, very much alive. And there are so many accounts of of interactions, of experiences, things caught on camera, all of that. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I think there's a very physical type and they may or may not be interdimensional because on the Cherokee Indian reservations, I've run into the very physical type, the very big, typical, but it, around here, we see a lot of, people would call them baby Sasquatch, but they're actually not baby Sasquatch. They're just, they're, they almost look like black bears, which are also very prevalent. Um, I just am pretty sure I don't have a hundred black bears in my yard. So um, it has to be something else. But so there's all these different types. And then I also know that they've been militarized because uh, I have a lot of connections in the military. And so then there's, those are the kind, I believe that mainly um, tear people apart. And a lot of times when you see the military on scene and you watch those stories, you know, where they come in and they take the body away and they threaten you and the men in black come and all that that is usually the military ones that they've been um, genetically altered for combat. They're literally kind of like Star Wars um, Chewbacca. They're more like that. Um, and so they don't want them running around, you know, terrorizing the population. So they do take them out. But I think a lot of them are just like us. You know, there's mean ones, there's nice ones, there's sick ones, there's well ones, there's smart ones, there's dumb ones. I mean, that's my experience in starting this communication with them. Since I've moved here, which is, um, you know, at the base of a quartz mountain on four acres of dense woods, um, they talk on my security camera. I haven't been able to grab a recorder yet and get it, but they talk and I've heard them speak now. And of course, they don't talk like we're talking. And, I, and I'm not going to imitate it because my daughter made fun of me when I did. She's like, how do they talk, mom? And I did it. And then she laughed hysterically for 20 minutes. So I'm not going to give you that demo. But it's definitely a guttural, uh, some kind of language. It's just not English. Wow. Have you, so with, with your seeing and you, you've used the word creating relationship with them, is there one in particular or a couple in particular you've really established some kind of connection with that there is ongoing communication? And if so, what's that about? I do have a couple older uh, ones that seem to be from the area and kind of um, guard or have always been in the area. Um, our communication right now, I haven't done it. I'm getting ready to do it. So I have to update you, but I'm going to put a whiteboard out in the woods with a erasable marker and I'm going to draw some pictures and my name really simply and see, you know, the response. I have left them, <laughs> I have to tell you this funny story. So my dad drives up and he's like, why is there a brand new doll line in the middle of your driveway? And I'm like, what do you mean? And I pretend to be really dumb. And he's like, there's a brand new doll and he's holding it up. And I'm like, I don't know, dad, probably the Amazon guy dropped it. And he's like, why would the Amazon guy drop a brand new doll out of the box in the middle of your driveway? Well, anyway, this was a gift I had brought for Sasquatch and they dropped it in the back in the middle of my driveway. Wow, no kidding. So where did you leave it that they found their way to put it back in the driveway? Well, okay, so you know, when you're building a house, because this is a new house, you get pretty familiar with the clearing and the trees and what they look like. And, you know, did they knock them down? Are they cut? Are they leaning? Well, when we came in, we had to destroy all their like, you know, X's in there. So I told them you can rebuild them as close to the house as you want. I don't care. So they've rebuilt a number of them close to the house and a number of them back on the next layer. So I took it back to the back ones and left it in their teeth. Wow. And what do you think that meant when they left it on your driveway? Oh, uh, that they didn't want it. <laughs> what did I thought? Like, thanks anyway. Not into dolls. <laughs> well, I mean, the kids will, we have pictures of, um, not my pictures, but my friends have pictures of their children holding uh, balls and dolls and things like real, like you can see like the kind of see-through, 
you know, Sasquatch and then they're holding the real thing. It's, it's kind of bizarre. It's like a ghost holding like a candlestick and the candlestick's real and the ghost is see-through. It's really bizarre. So we do know that sometimes they do, but each Sasquatch group is different. Some Sasquatch researchers will say, oh, they love powdered donuts. Well, maybe yours does, but does every person love powdered donuts? No. So it is all about learning. I mean, I've left tobacco and that's disappeared. Um, I found big, big quartz crystals um, at my front door and back door since I've lived here. And I assume that's from them because I mean, usually rocks don't fall out of the trees or squirrels don't usually place rocks there. I found beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pine cones also placed by my door. So I think we're starting with like a gift type of exchange. Oh, that's beautiful. I want to know more about cryptids. I want to know more about um, some examples or stories of the work you've done around this. One of my favorite things is I had a, a guy from Florida um, and he's pretty popular and does a lot of uh, YouTube's Mark. I can't think of his last name right now, but uh, he has some great videos too on his channel, but he came up to North Carolina, you know, to investigate in North Carolina. And this was, you know, in the uh, Cherokee reservation um, out way out past Asheville. And um, we got in at midnight and I immediately felt them around me. And um, I walked down to this, you know, ridge that was beneath me. And I couldn't see anything. I could just feel them. I could feel their presence because these things are massive. And I could tell there were, we call them guards. Um, you know, it's who they leave out at night. They're women and children, you know, and younger ones sleep and then they guard. And so I could feel them beneath me and it was like silence. And I was standing there and they were standing there. And all of a sudden, one of them went like this. It went oh, beneath me. And most people would be scared, but I'm telling you, Debbie, I grew up in religion. I've been in many sacred places, many sacred experiences. This was the most religious mm. to be. I knew he was like half a foot beneath me, his top of his head. And he could have torn me limb from limb, probably with a thought, mm. but they stood there and we just kind of honored each other's presence. And then you heard them boom, boom, boom away. It was, I, it wasn't the best you know, for photography, it wasn't recorded, but for me, it was one of my best experiences because it was this just like, wow, there's so much we do not know the answers to. There's so much um, that we haven't experienced that we remember anyway here. And this is definitely a being from another planet that is here. Is this correct? I mean, it's a weird question because you and I both know we all are, right? <laughs> We're none of us from here. We're all hybrids and amalgams, et cetera. I'm just asking the best of my understanding, something like a Sasquatch is definitely from another dimension. I really think they are. I don't know if they got trapped here like some of us did. Some of us, of course, you actually volunteered to come here, but I have a really weird long story about I got volunteered and trapped here, which doesn't seem possible, but it is. But you definitely volunteered to come here. And so maybe some of them volunteered to come here at this time at the end of an age. Um, maybe some of them were, you know, trapped or maybe some of them were descendants from a from some of this failed military experience because when the military experiment failed they tried to wipe out them all and some of them escaped so maybe some of them are descendants like way down i don't know you know what i'm i'm perfectly okay with not having all the answers and i don't pretend like i do i know a lot of people do pretend but i don't this is a day by day sometimes i wish they weren't here because it's really very distracting when you have work to do and dogs to let out and house to clean and children to talk to and and they're standing there. I had one walk out just the other day. I can send you in your email, but I had one walk out at like four o'clock and just stand there. And I just had to take a picture of it. It's very distracting. Yeah, but also sort of divine. I mean, that you're chosen in that way to interact. I think that's great. Are there other, other knowings that you have about cryptids like the anaconda, like the Yeti, like uh, what's, what are some others? Loch Ness. What, what is the truth or myth about those? I honestly think there's, well, and it's funny because I have relatives that work right now in human cloning. So that mm. changes your whole world when you, when you start talking to people that work in the cloning centers and that work in some of these, you know, darker or more secret projects. And um, I honestly think a lot of them, you kind of said it, are, um, you know, these mythical creatures are lab, maybe mixed uh, creatures. Um, some of them maybe were pure, but there's been so much emphasis on genetic experimentation, both in 
human avatars, I call them, and in animal avatars. And we can know that by reading, you know, about Bacchus and all the, you know, Greek mythology and Roman mythology and the centaurs and on and on. We know this has been going on forever. So I just believe there's, you know, whether they wanted to wipe them out or not, or whether they put them on a little island and said, stay there. Um, you know, everybody has free will, including creatures. So I just think there's a lot of uh, experiments that have gotten out or uh, escaped, let's say. Very interesting uh, point of view. Okay. And that actually like makes sense. It's logical. Nothing's logical in, in these conversations, but it actually is very logical. <laughs> the only time anyone will ever, mark mark this down, you guys. <laughs> the only time someone will ever call me logical. <laughs> <laughs> On the Dare to Dream show only. So, okay, very cool. So you have a lot of comfort in this arena. And what about um, the paranormal? What is that like for you? What do you see? What are you able to do in that? area, what is your relationship with the paranormal? Um, I really didn't have a choice because I was born with such high present gifts that um, I was forced to have a relationship with the paranormal. It wasn't something that I sought. So I've always seen human discarnates. I've always seen blobs and moving energies. I've always seen demonic or darker energies. I've always seen portals open up and connect to other realms. I've always seen spaceships. I've always seen grays. I've always seen all sorts of things. I don't even know what they are. And to this day, I can't, I don't know. I haven't, you know, communicated with every single thing I've seen. I don't even know what half the stuff, um, you know, I've seen. So of course there was a period of time I shut it off and then I opened it back up. And then it was my career clearing houses, clearing people, exorcisms. Um, and my 12 year old was so gifted. She's like the ghost whisperer chick. She sees hundred percent of the time and she's really tuned into human discarnates and demonic entity. So she and I would go and clear, you know, a lot of wealthy people's houses in Columbus, Ohio. And so this was like my career. And then I started helping, you know, big ghost names. And this is what people don't know. It's people like us. We don't get any glory, but we do the back count, you know? So I worked for a lot of big teams and they'd call me because I'm a remote viewer and they'd say, where do we put the cameras? What uh, human discarnates are we going to run into? What are we going to show? They would, um, you know, hire me to give them a better shot at a better show. Oh my gosh. I, I couldn't do that. I, I don't think I can. <laughs> when you say demonic and dark, I'm like, I'm out. To what? So no, what? no, I disagree. I'm going to disagree with you because you have such amazing abilities. If you would allow, and, the, and you, you're familiar with this, this point of view, I know you are. You have to be willing to hold it all in your being and see it all. And then your powers exponentially, your sight, your hearing, all your psychic abilities really flip fully on. But think about limitation, Debbie. When you limit yourself, you're cutting off. If you're only willing to see you know, a certain frequency, what we call light or good or whatever word you want to put at it, you're blocking yourself off from neutral, possibly from dark. But, you know, is there even dark and light? This whole, you know, place is built on polarity. So then we just get all, you know, crazy and spiral because I guarantee you in your past lives, you've been dark, you've been light, you've been dark, you've been neutral, you've been everything, you've been man, you've been woman, you've been murder, you've been victim, you've been perpetrator, you know, and me too, because you're an old soul and I'm an old soul. So I then do. dark and light becomes different because we do hold, whether we're accessing it or not, we do hold that in our being because everyone that we've ever been, we are right now. So you're actually saying to me that I, is this everybody has this ability or I can see dead people? What are you saying? <laughs> You, I, and this actually came up in your scan, you have, uh, but I could already tell you that about you. You have the gift, like you were born. When you came on this planet, you already had a higher ability, the metagene, the higher level psychic abilities. You've probably been in some of the projects. You've probably been, possibly been at Langley, possibly, I'd have to look, I didn't look at all this stuff. Possibly you've been at Montauk. Possibly you are currently in projects at night. We, I don't know, I didn't look. So, you know, they pick the best and brightest and then they don't pay us, but we work for them. I want you to talk about that because when I was reading up about you, I saw that as one of the subjects and I was like, what? <laughs> so you're basically saying, you know, and that is a huge conversation out there with people. 
occasionally hear someone, oh, I've been taken anything from a spacecraft to yes, some government lab experiences. Um, but you're saying something different. You're saying this goes on at a really high level we don't know about, which makes me really nervous because I've been so tired lately and I'm <laughs> sleeping like like I go out like that and I'm gone, which right. isn't typical for me. Well, what? So what is this? How do you know about this? And what are they doing? Okay, let's rewind a little bit. So yeah. what do we know about sleep and how do we know it? What we know about sleep, first of all, so everything here is a program. If you believe like I do, and I don't know what I currently uh, believe and I resonate with is that this is a prison planet and this is kind of a mirrored upside down in where it's good as bad, bad as good, you know, right as, you know, up and down, it's all crazy. And we can kind of see that reflected in our society. I believe it's run by controllers that are not the 13 Illuminati families. I believe it's run by interstellar um which i actually believe this is all going to be revealed this year and i don't think the big reveal is you know the pizza gate the kids in containers the organ harvesting the adrenochrome honey that's not mark my words you will remember this show that's not the big reveal you want to know what i believe because yeah. we've been testing our technology that is 100 percent accurate okay so you know we've been learning Yes. We're starting to believe this is a working theory. So don't throw this back in my face, everyone. This is a theory, but we're pretty sure it's true. I'm thinking even the clones, even the Sims, even the synthetics. So even unsold beings, which are way more than you guys think they are in this reality. We think almost 100% of everyone, including pets, are being taken and implanted and experimented on and shot and scooped and working projects and are super soldiers and have um, altars and have, you know, consciousness projecting into clones. And now from talking to the people that I have access to, including very intimate people that used to be intimate in my life, um, that I'm not allowed to say who they are, uh, or probably wouldn't be talking to you very long. <laughs> but um, seriously, I believe the, dis the disclosure is not just going to be we can space travel. Like, for example, do you know that in every Hilton and Marriott, there's an entire floor in every single hotel devoted to jump rooms? Jump rooms. Wow. And the jump Whoa, that's so and cool. Yeah, it's so cool, but it's so creepy. So it's easy to snatch people through all the jump rooms at night in the hotel, right? Just pick your floor and you know yank them through. And also in, in every single one of their hotels, which tells you who owns them, um, the tram, the deep underground, you know, 15 minute from New York to California tram runs underneath it. Okay. Every single one. Oh my God, oh my God. So this is like, the reason why I said that's so cool is because these are movies I watch, right? Oh, Jumper, okay. right? Jumpers and... Uh, okay. You know, the superhuman powered people. And, and so this is not Marvel comics because without a doubt, life imitates art, imitates life. And I've always wondered, people who write these amazing sci-fi TV or films or books, where do they, where do they download this from? Wait, wait, do you want to know where? Wait, yes. this gets even weirder. And we know this from our technology too. Yeah. They get it. Movie, the movies. And the comic books and the TV shows that you're talking about, including the Marvel comics, they're based on us, the, me the meta gene, the amazing fire creation spirits. They're based on us. They actually model the characters on us. It is way weirder than you think, Debbie, I'm telling you. Well, Those are not fiction. Those are 100% true. So the mainstream media is your fiction. All that wild sci-fi Doctor Who Star Trek Star Wars, that's all true. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. And that is exactly what you're saying before. Everything's opposite. Everything. It, wow, truly is. You know, once upon a time, I swear, woman, I would have rolled my eyes. I just want the audience to know. Me like, too. That's what no one believes. Me too. I thought, right. you'll laugh, Debbie. Back in the day, 15, 20 years ago, this is what I thought. A born again Christian. The devil's everything, the Illuminati's behind it all, 
rapture is going to happen. We don't have to worry about it. We go to heaven. That was where I stopped. I used to think the alien was an alien agenda and all that. No, no more. When you get your memory back and you start meeting people that know you mm -hmm. from the MK Ultra programs and you start getting memory and they send you pictures, like it's mind blowing stuff. When you're followed around, oh, Deb, I can send you pictures of the FBI agent car right beside my car when I go out of town. Like they watch me like a hawk. You know why? Because they don't want me telling your audience this. They don't want people to know. If they were ready for disclosure, right, it'd be disclosed. It just seems to me on some level it's too late. You know, this is not, um, you're not like a single crier in the wind. This is That's so true. much bigger. And, you know, first of all, we're all, we've all been upgraded recently again. And even for folks like me, who I feel like I've always been open, but maybe an open-minded skeptic, mm -hmm. there have just been so many downloads that have been going on that I'm like, oh my God, that's truth. That's truth. That's there. There's all this knowing for folks who are waking up at a higher level. And I think things that we see that are so backwards out there that can't be rectified. It just can't. And then you hear things like this and it's like, oh, okay this fits, this makes sense. Like I get this. One of my favorite questions that I just woke up yesterday with a sprained wrist. How do you wake up at night with a sprained wrist? How do you wake up at night with, with bruises that match like an arm, you know, a hand grabbing your arm? How do you wake up at night with needle marks? And then I have done real urinalysis tests and I test for things like cocaine and ecstasy. Pretty sure while I'm sleeping, I wasn't like, you know, doing drugs, but I was. Wow. So they actually, here's what they don't tell you. Right. It's not just consciousness transfer into clones. They actually take, they freeze time. They can freeze time in your house. They can freeze time in your town. They freeze time in wherever they want. And they just snatch the whole town. Sometimes it can be three weeks. It's exactly like 20 and back, 40 and back, 60 and back, and 80 and back. If you guys know what that is, they do it to whole towns. They even have pictures. A lot of times you'll see these UFOs and you'll see all these little dots. And if you and people have gotten telescopes and they've blown them up and there's people, they're people, they're in their nightgowns, they're animals, they're people that are all these little dots being sucked up. Like you see in the, you know, old, old UFO movies where they just put the light and, you know, suck you up. That's, you know, they've been doing this for ages. It's the deals that our government has made for millennia, probably with these, you know, beings for different technology in exchange for the technology that we've always had. So it's crazy because it's really no one's because we've had every single technology we have. It's not Tesla that makes me want to laugh hysterically on the ground. He didn't invent anything. I mean, that technology is in hieroglyphics all over Egypt. Hmm. Nothing, nothing is new. You know that phrase, there's nothing new under the sun. And to all what technology. end, to what end are they? I mean, because this, Everything you're saying, by the way, I've had Whitley Strieber on the show several times. He's coming back again in June because I can't get enough of him. And um, you know who this is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's exquisite. And he talks about this stuff. My God, this man has all sorts of experiences, but somehow retains consciousness while they're happening. Mm -hmm. you know, That's weird. They, yeah. they, memory wipe. they almost it's, always memory drug and memory wipe with technology. Actually, we're all memory wiped. Um, you're uploaded to the mainframe computer. Actually, you guys can go to uh, the Sushi cameras, S-E-C-C-H-I right now, and you can pull up a picture of the sun simulator because it's not the sun. The portal is the sun, which is behind, and you can see the wings of the spaceship of the dark entity that runs the entire matrix simulation computer that you guys, with your energy and your creativity and your brilliance, fuel. So we hold and fuel this entire simulation with our being, but they run it and they harness it and they use and use and use and use. And that's what's ending. That's what the big reveal is. Not the kid. It's not just physically like, you know, killing kids, eating kids, eating people. That's traumatic enough, but that's not as traumatic as realizing since you came on this planet, you've been farmed out six ways to Sunday, 24 seven. Hmm. How are beings known by frequencies? Which kind of all beings are known? I mean, every group of being has their own frequency range, of course. Okay. So I know, so talk more about frequencies, because this is the thing that you're really into right now. And you've created the frequency right, master. Right. And I know there's, you've got a lot of energy in this area. 
Right, absolutely. So this is what I ask my people. I say, what if you can know anything, all time, all space, all non-time, all non-space, any planet, any reality, anything. And they're like, bring it on, you know? You can, how? If you can read frequency, or if you have an app that can read frequency, you can see down to the bone of any house, any land, any animal, any creature, any ghost, any demon, any anybody, anywhere, any planet, any, you can know everything because everything broadcasts a frequency signal. Thoughts, programming, beliefs, diseases. We don't have to guess what programming is. I know exactly what your programming is. One of your, you want me to talk to you about your programming that came up screaming? It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, this is crazy. So just so the audience knows, Right before we got on air, Kimberly's publicist sent me an email and said, Kim wants to see a picture of you. I'm like, all right. I went in the kitchen, snap, and I sent it. And so here we are. I, I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> yeah, so you're, the programming that came screaming that you wanted to talk to me about and get rid of, which we did work on it. I worked on you before the show, was a manifestation programming. So um, specifically, I can tell you some of your specific beliefs uh, that I worked on that came up. So one of your beliefs is you can't change anything or I can't change anything. Mm -hmm which is a lie, of course, because you're a powerful, infinite, ancient being that can change anything they want. Um, whatever will be, will be. Have you heard that phrase before? That's a programming phrase in many, many songs. Yeah. Many, yes. many movies. It's actually- that's said it, actually, said ah. that, Yeah, and that, that is actually, and that's a song, right? Yeah. It, that's not an accident. That's MK programming to program you and me and everybody else that we are not manifestors. They want to harness the manifesting creation power. They don't want us to realize that we can create our own mini realities and affect the macro reality. So you are really, that's the programming that came up really you. Um, oh, you're really, this tells me you're in my labs. Here's what told me without even looking that you're in my labs. Changing reality will kill you. How powerful, if you believe that, if they programmed you to believe that, who wants to die? So you're not going to change reality, right, Debbie? Because who wants to die? You might not be ready to die right now. How powerful do you have to be for a being or energy to program you with that phrase? Mm. Think about that. That's pretty horrible, actually. Talk about limitations. I mean, but it's pretty wonderful because are they that afraid of you? Apparently so. Mm. So freak. So these are the frequencies that were obviously not working very well for me, no matter what I create, this always is going to come in and put the kibosh on it. And, are, and then are there other frequencies that just have a lot of flow and light and goodness and positivity? Of course. And like I tell people, people are like, oh my gosh, you just talked to me for 25 minutes. You were just like, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. But people don't, why do you want, you don't want to waste my time. I mean, you know, what's right. Cause what's right. It's working for you. You know, the healthy parts of you are working your life is working. But so I'm always here to, you know, say what's out of balance, out of homeostasis. But um, yeah, I could tell you what, you know, there's other things, which again, I didn't look at. Um, I can tell you some things about you that are in balance and this you'll, you'll get tickled about this. So for example, your throat chakra is in balance, mm. meaning you speak truth. You speak truth to yourself. You freely express yourself. You're very authentic. So it, and it's not surprising that someone with a balanced throat chakra is going to be, you know, having such a successful show. And that's cool. Cause I started singing. I stopped singing 13 years ago when I got on radio and um, I used to be a professional singer, just like and it came up last year, like, whoop, whatever happened to that, you know? And I was working with a shaman who said, do it, Debbie. It doesn't go away. Start again. And my boyfriend, thankfully, was so supportive and was like, I'll play guitar. So we've been singing and performing in all sorts oh, of places. I bet that helps. I bet that helps to keep it, you know, really balanced, really nice and balanced. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. So, I mean, things came up on you like, um, and this is true of all of us. So it's not just Debbie, but a lot of us were fragmented. They take literally take pieces of our soul because we are so magical, so powerful, so mm -hmm. wonderful. They want, they want to use that. So if you're not in possession of your gifts, they're like, she's, she doesn't know who she is. So let's just borrow this and borrow this and borrow that. So you are, you, as many of us, I mean, of course your, your soul is parted out. You don't have your entire like soul from the time you came into being. 
but that's very common as you probably know. And is that something that for those who are resonating, this can be ameliorated by working with you or soul retrieval or how does that work? You know what's interesting, a lot of people teach soul retrieval and I know how to do soul retrieval, but it can be dicey depending who's holding it. I mean, that can get really crazy and weird, but um, you don't have to because all time is now, there is no space. So all you do, if you want to connect to all your souls, you just go connect. You just connect to where that soul is and that realm and that dimension. Um, and there's many, many aspects of you right now in this moment in time, not in time, because there's really no time. Uh, you can connect to all those aspects. You can connect way back to when you first came and nobody was in control of you and you weren't on this planet and you can access all the gifts and abilities of that. There's no every any the word limitation is just everything from the overlords there is no limitation the limitation is here they get you right here that's it so if we can change ourselves what about um events like natural events in the world what is possible there are they changeable unchangeable a lot of times they uh the fire creation beings uh because of course there's non-fire creation beings that are in human suits too uh, many many of them uh there's very few fire creation beings left but it doesn't take much so when they say the storm is coming on friday it's not just harp that brings in the storm it's you thinking oh the storm is coming we're not going to be able to go to the soccer game i'm going to have to buy umbrellas you contribute remember everything in this reality is not run by them or their technology you are the fire that causes the technology to work for the simulation so you stop i don't agree i completely control the weather wherever i live mm -hmm. and i have proven it countless times if i want it sunny it's sunny if i need rain i bring the rain in i completely overrun any technology or any other being i control my micro world and sometimes I play with the macro world too. And it's interesting because interestingly enough, three fire creation souls can change almost anything. So we're three or more gathered, <laughs> three or more. <laughs> That's yeah. very, that, and what would that look like? How, how would you go about changing things? Um, it would look like if you knew, and again, uh, I can read timelines, people can read timelines. Actually, that what's so exciting for me to say this, despite what everybody else is saying, I love going against what everybody else is saying anyway, but uh, so much amazing things are happening. There's really not much macro that needs to change. Everything is going pretty good, all this. I mean, it makes me laugh again. The nuclear war thing, it's such a skit. It's such an old, old, old tired script. Like, there are no, there will never be a nuclear war on this. There's never going to be a nuclear war here. All the, we have access to much worse weapons. I mean, if you're going to go, you guys, it's not going to be a nuclear war and your eyes are going to fall, your skin's going to melt, you're going to walk around limping like a zombie. No, you're going to go like this, it's going to be gone. You're going to have free choice and move on wherever you want to go. So, so much of this is, you know, there's not much to change really, but you could, you can start by, I always recommend you start by changing the weather, but you can change disease, you can change, um, politics you can change you know crime in your area you can change whatever you want basically your website the secret well just secret to everything.com secret to everything.com all right share some secrets i want secrets i want what about creating That's happiness funny. You know, I do teach a lot of stuff, you know, in my classes and stuff, a lot of how to, you know, remember who you are and activate your abilities. And people always would ask me at the end of these interviews, they'd be like, what's the secret? And of course, I used to say frequency is the secret to everything, which is, I mean, it's a secret to a lot of things. If you can read frequency, basically, you've got it made. Or if you have access to something that can read frequency. However, now I say the secret to everything isn't all this stuff I can teach you or do or magic tricks, you know, it's you and you, and you, but you have to remember and know that and in action, step into the fullness of that and then turn it outward. And together we can usher us into the fourth dimension. It's so funny, people skip the fourth dimension. This is again, I'll say, honey, <laughs> if you can't see the fourth dimension, you aren't going to the fifth dimension. We don't skip dimensions here. It would be the fourth dimension, not the fifth dimension. So nobody's here 
unless I mean, unless they don't choose to stay around, they're not going to the fourth dimension. As a consciousness, we're moving into the fourth dimension, not the fifth dimension. So all those books crack me up, you know, 5D awakening and all that. I mean, it's fine, but we're not skipping dimensions. We're not that enlightened, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> That's a collective. And do you have predictions? <laughs> you, you know, here we are. Um, I won't say much about this, this state of the world right now. We all know what it is. There's not much I can add to it. But what are your predictions for the rest of this year and even going forward? Um, within the next six months to year and a half, a replicator, absolutely 100% in every house, not just food replicator where you get an allowance of, for your food. You know, we already have 3D printers. So people are like, no, impossible. Come on, guys. They just call them 3D printers. They're replicators, okay? They're just going to expand them. Um, and then instead of an Amazon truck coming to my house 17 times a day when you order three things, uh, you know how that goes. I'm like, stop, the dogs are barking. Um, you're just going to type in your little thing and it's going to pop out your pencils or your pen or the book that you want. It's going to pop out of the replicator. So exactly like the movies, they showed us. They showed us they always had this technology. Um, also space travel, 100% common. We will have access to the jump gates, positive jump gates. Nobody, believe me, you guys have worked as slaves and super soldiers and cyborgs on Mars. You do not want to live on Mars. Give that up. There's so many planets and so many dimensions and so much amazingness in the multiverse, believe me, you're not gonna go to Mars, but there will be all this, these other colonies, there's already colonies set up that are really cool and amazing colonies with American citizens in them on other planets right now that you will be allowed to visit and join if you wish. They are like you see with a really cool spacey, they're all peaceful, there's no war, just really amazing stuff. So you're gonna have access to that. Um, there's gonna be a prox, there's gonna be a huge era of peace, um, all police are going out. Sorry, guys. All judges are going out. All lawyers are going out. The military, not as you think military, not like the my labs take you from your bed military, you know, men in black, not none of that stuff. It's going to be a kind of reformed, gentler, kinder military will be the rule. So it will be military law, but not as you would think. Um, that's coming really soon. Like all of this stuff. Um, they're right now, the reason all the countries have activated all their armies, Russia, America, Korea, is because they are, we're taking down China, you guys. So you have to level the playing field, then you can go forward. So we're almost done with that. I think that's going to take a while. Um, of course, you know, totally different form of government. Um, you guys know all about that probably. Um, so I, all that is happening. And I know people that are going in the dumps and, you know, taking out the kids and rescuing and blowing stuff up. So everybody's like, it's not happening. But when you talk to people and they're like bawling or they're crying or they're tired or they're exhausted or they're shattered or they're in trauma counseling, like, I don't think they're making that up. Like, it's just too much. You can't make <laughs> those kind of details up. There's no reason to make it up. So things are happening. A ton of the bases have been cleared. You know, there's so many bases. There's so many CERN locations. There's just so much on this planet that's been allowed to run unbridled for so long. And um, it's just not going to happen anymore. We are really, if you guys are biblical, you would call this, we are right on the brink of going into the thousand year reign. You know what they would call that in the Bible. It will be peaceful. We're not going to kill animals. We're not going to eat animals. We're not going to eat each other. We're not going to kill each other. We're not going to have, it's not going to be like that. Are you saying we're going to go vegan or vegetarian? You're actually going to see a lot of the animals taken off planet because of the way we've treated them. And a lot of them are higher souls. They're not just empty containers. You know, like animals can be empty containers. People can be empty containers. So there's a lot of the animals have come to, you know, heal and assist and work with us and we brutalize them. And so um, we are, I believe, going to see, it's so funny, on, you guys know what the next door app is? The yeah. neighbors are kind of freaking me out because my prediction is we're gonna barely be allowed to have a lot of animals on this planet. You're not gonna see all the variety and the large amount and you know, yada, yada. And they're like, where are all the squirrels this year? Where are all the birds? And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really freaky. Like, this is my prediction. Like, why are you guys saying this? And I've noticed it. Have you guys not noticed it? I live in the mountains and in the country and I drive tons of mountain roads, tons of country roads. In the old days, and I'm gonna date myself in the 80s, Debbie, when you're driving out, you know, from your, oh, I never party, 
from your non-parties. Um, <laughs> there was like deers and chipmunks and smashed raccoons and possums and horrible things and dogs and cats. There's like stuff littering the roads because there were so many freaking animals. You guys know what I mean that would yeah. run out at night in front of your cars. I barely see animals and I live in the mountains. There's something to that, I'm telling you. Very interesting. So those are some of my predictions, but they're all good. Like I have no bad predictions. Oh, money. Um, money is going to be the quantum financial system, but it's not what you guys think. It's not Bitcoin. It's not Dogecoin. It's not blah, blah, blah. It, it, there is an aspect of that, but guess what? The quantum financial system is based on your spirit brilliance. So the coinage is you. So if you're a wicked healer, if you're a wicked psychic, if you're, you know, awesome at that in the new system where we've been brutalized and hung and drowned and mocked and made fun of now <laughs> we're going to be at the top finally and other people are going to have to adapt so the more physical jobs in the new system are not going to be the premier awarded job it's going to be the healers it's going to be the counselors it's going to be the psychic this is going to be the ones that already are ahead of the crowd wow. by having their meta abilities turned on that is so interesting you know i saw this already happen last year at the beginning of covid and I saw people who, I don't know fully what the state of their business was, but I know them as healers. And all of a sudden they were so in demand. Everybody wanted a session with them to connect with them. I watched businesses go like big money makers. People were so booked out, channelers, such gifted people. I was like, damn, it's about time people. So that's awesome. I absolutely believe this is already going on. What about, Kimberly, what about things like plant medicine? Because there's been a huge rise in the shaman. There's been a huge rise in the indigenous in ayahuasca, in bufo, in uh, yeah, San Pedro. Absolutely. How does that play in? That's temporary because when this shift happens and the frequency changes in the entire realm, let's say, um, you're going to get your full memory back. Once you have full memory back, you automatically remember who you are and your abilities are right there. So you won't need substances to assist you, to connect you to a building. Oh. You have. Huh. That's cool. Uh, I wonder like experiences like that, because <clears throat> I've played around with all of that. And I agree. I mean, there's no doubt for me anyway, I'm hanging out with the divine, you know, I'm a part of all that is in those, yeah, those times. And I wonder if it like rehabilitates memory in a way. So the default is easier to come back to. It is. It does. I, well, not all of them are created equal. Hmm. I don't want to speak out of turn and recommend something higher than another, but there's just some that are better for that than others. So they all kind of hit different receptors and kind of, you know, do different things to the brain. But um, it starts with an M that's really good for memory and spiritual connection. Hmm. Starts with an M. Okay. Not M-A either. All right. Uh, you can do something for the audience, some kind of experience or offering for us to... Sure. How much time do we have? Because I tend to get in my, my world and then like, Debbie's like, this is an hour show. You just made it through. <laughs> um, yeah. I just want to be conscious of time. I mean, I'm, I, I'm happy to do it. I just want to know like what my restrictions are. How is seven minutes in heaven with Kimberly McGeorge? I'll, I'll, will you interrupt me if we need to be interrupted? Because sure. I might not be fully present. <laughs> I will do my best. We will hold intention for everybody. But um, is there anything you want them to do? Should they be not driving? Should just, they be... like roll your shoulders. Roll... No, they can drive. Like roll your neck. Like just kind of shift into a little bit different space if you can. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. All right, so just kind of breathe in, one, two, three, breathe out, one, two, and three. We are coming into an age where it is a necessary skill to be able to discern for ourselves what do you know to honor our deep knowing and our own truth. 
there is consciousness and frequency everywhere and all is made from the exact same substance but you are a unique spark of light of color of sound that resides in a temporary body but with awareness which is your existence itself we bring in that greater self all memory all knowing that is pure awareness. We bring in that self, the one that is eternal, the one that is timeless, simultaneous, magical, and present here right now. Connect in three, in two, in one. And wherever you turn your focus, there will be power. There will be energy supporting your new endeavors. It is your individual presence unified right now, the energy of the higher enlightened group mind that is influencing your micro timelines and our macro timelines. You can project yourself and will yourself into any time, non-time, any space, non-space and any realm or existence at any time. You are constantly connected with unlimited assistance of all types both on planet and off. All you have to do is ask, please guide me. Please help me. Please sit with me. Please comfort me. Mm -hmm. Because you are interlinked and connected with the energetic frequencies that are vibrating in unity throughout the multiverse. Mm -hmm. At any moment, you are able to change infinite potential into choice and choice and choice you are able to currently contribute to what is happening now globally because of your energetic powerful being and you can become the director as needed and direct streams of influence and transmute actively anything right now we refuse to get pulled into the drama that is happening right now across the world. We refuse to buy into the scripts and the lies we maintain and hold personal power standing center in the third chakra. We do not allow any external person or circumstances to negatively affect us or throw our timelines or our lives off course. We become highly attuned and extra sensitive to the subtle vibratory influences. And that is due to our increasing connection to the void, to the all. Say it quietly or out loud. I am divine intelligence mastered. So right now, right here, we connect to our own multidimensional selves from the beginning that has separated and become who we are in this moment. Our core nature is not just light, it is knowledge and all knowing and all frequency itself. We bring in a brilliant sapphire blue frequency up from your throat into your third eye and all the way up through your crown to your higher chakras. And then we're going to together send this out as a beacon, surround throughout the multiverse, throughout this universe, throughout the world. And we're gonna travel all non-time and non-space until it arrives back at the void and out of the void comes what it comes, all potential, all possibilities and all creation. And here we root our soul connection we ask that our faith begins to transcend knowing. We know that we know that we know that we know and no one can convince us different. We awaken right now in three, two, come on, and one, everyone's intuition and we dissolve any emotion or any doubt that skews that perception. We bring in the sharp awareness that this body is just an avatar and that our spirit is so big, we almost can't handle the power that in reality the body contains. Mm -hmm. We stabilize and begin to stabilize and we set this program for three days, 24 seven, all shifts in frequency on the planet and all shifts in our consciousness right now. We hold our minds steady in the light as we proceed to clearing. We now go into the body and the energy field and we begin to identify the AI programs governing the parameters of operation of our body, our soul, our heart, our spirit, and all components related to anything that has been targeted by lesser or lower frequency or agendas. We now are going to sweep through your fields and identify programming that has been manipulated into an unbalanced uh, form where additions or subtractions have been made to us that are not ours and any soul pieces have departed or been stolen. I now declare through my power and your power of your being that all artificial 
uh, hijacked programming must now be unlocked and dismissed. And we release all gates, all frequencies, all barriers, all cloaking devices, all force fields, any negative and dark sacred geometry, any DNA matrices, any apexes of time, evil formulas, or defensive protocols. Right now, join with me as we renounce our tethering to our overlaying, our interfering with all existence, including any connection to current and modern technology like CERN. We also renounce all interface points with our genetics, cells of every type, DNA strands, bone marrow, meridian lines, energy signatures, acupuncture points, anchors, and markers. We address again any AI, including any related oversells and quantum technologies, and we separate and break the contract with them now. I'm pulling up your documents that detail every covenant, contract, agreement, certificate, oath, and vows that are entangling you, including any books of wisdom, books of knowledge, books of philosophy, books of time travel, Freemasonic books, programming books, computational books, and all other books that you considered sacred that were traps. Right now, we dissolve, we negate, and we send them back to the void. We call for disconnection from any laboratories, military bases, radar facilities, cell towers, antenna rays, satellites, grids, transmitters, computers, physical, electrical, energetic, or spiritual implants, any implicated space filling curves, any other technology, any other facilities involved. We render them null and void and break any ties, attachments, or cordings. We break all links established by the technology that has caused any interference or any disease in your physical avatar. Again, just another sweep identifying any internal labs, computer rooms, any other facilities, any related to backups that have your soul pieces, any back doors, any backup programs, any power sources, any backup power sources, any bombs, any tripwires, any booby traps, past, present, and future to an infinity. We dissolve them now. We consume them in the divine fire of your own creation and dissolve. Just waiting for that to process. And so it is. And so it was, and so it will always be. Oh, wow. Like bright red. <laughs> that was really special. Man, Kimberly, George, woman. Uh, we were talking, just the two of us before the show started, but I really want you to tell people how they can work with you. I know you have a book coming out soon, The Secret to Everything series. Just give us a couple of places and spaces and possibilities to connect deeper and further with you, my goddess. <laughs> You're so sweet. Uh, you know, like I said, secrettoeverything.com. We have a form on there. So if you have any questions or doubt about, you know, what we offer or where you might, you know, benefit, we'd be happy to direct you, my staff. Um, Kimberly McGeorge is my YouTube channel. Quite a bit of information on there. Um, like and subscribe, please. We're kind of small. Um, you know, Serene Wellness on Twitter, Kimberly McGeorge, Secret to Everything on Facebook. Um, you can type in either Secret to Everything or Kimberly McGeorge. As Debbie knows, I've been around a little bit. So there's a lot of material. And, um, and you, do you work one-on-one -on -one with people? Do you do workshops? How, how does that operate? Um, you know, again, I'm old. So when we old, we get more selective. So I don't do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. We do small groups. We have a, actually right now we're have these beautiful five to seven people. We have three groups running. They're remembering groups. They're remembering detailed who you are as a soul and how you got here wow. and activating your psychic ability. So we have those three rating. There's a waiting list for the fourth. So we're going to be starting some up in the summer and fall. So we're doing that. That's about as one-on-one -on -one as I get. I do offer to people that have had scans with me a special one time only one on one session with me if they want to take that scan, you know, further or understand or break it down. Uh, we really like people to enter in through the full scans or the top scans because I mean, I talk fast, as you guys know, I, I talk like 30 minutes, and you get like an hour and a half of like more than you ever wanted to know about yourself. So we like people to enter in there. And then we have monthly groups where I teach the woo-woo stuff and we do processes like that, uh, ultimate awakening and ultimate elite. And then we have, you know, random other classes going on at any given time. What do you do every day that grounds you? Do you have a daily practice? Do you have a ritual that you use that keeps you like as you are, you seem, you keep saying old, but, but you're like one of the most vital people I've been around in a while, so. Yeah, you know what, moving into literally, you guys, I live at the base of a old quartz, beautiful mountain, just the base of it, literally under it. And I live literally 
smack dab in the middle of a dense, you know, forest. And that keeps me being surrounded. Like I don't have, I have neighbors, but I can't see them. So everywhere I look, you know, it's the trees I have a relationship with. It's the interdimensionals I have a relationship with. We didn't even talk about my relationship with the Fae. I could show you a picture where, where you'd literally fall over out of your chair of a little uh, Fae that came and uh, the security camera said, person detected. And it's a little fairy this tall wearing a cloak guarding my door for three days. He stood at my back door for three days every night. It's the most amazing picture. So this place is so magical. I know it sounds you know, contraindicated, but I step out in the morning and I sit out there with my dogs and I am just so connected to the organic. And that's really important, not just organic food, but we're so away from that. Even those of us that live outside of town, like we just don't take that presence you how can you know your presence of being when we're so in distraction and we don't take that time to hold our own presence of being hmm. interesting yeah good good call to to non-action for everybody <laughs> <laughs> non-action and my dogs and they've been really good they, they keep me grounded and they help kind of they all I said I always say I'm so traumatized and I've been in so many programs I have to have 10 dogs so they all share my stress you know because mm -hmm. you, you know, our animals take our you know weight for us I've got three you've got 10 so I I feel you I if somebody had told me oh you know you're gonna have three dog I, I would have been like really I don't think so <laughs> I can't imagine life without I love it it's so oh, cool. I love that. they're also I love different that. Yeah, exactly. Just like kids, just like people, right? Each animal is so different. Exactly. Totally. Well, what are you next dare to dream? This is dare to dream. What are your future dreams and goals? Ooh, I'm so glad you asked. We're actually looking for land right now for a um, trauma center and retreat center in North Carolina, a big place. And we're going to allow um, the workers are going to be provided free housing and they're going to live on, you know, and we're going to do like all the cool stuff you guys like uh you know all all the you know acupuncture and all the you know frequency healing and all the technology and and you're going to come there and you're going to you're going to have what we call a level up experience so you know when you go to retreats and stuff you need that sometimes you need that jump to rock you out so we're really interested in helping people with PTSD which is all of us you know and trauma and we want to do that in an in person center so that's a little bit down the road but coming up pretty quick Awesome. So Kimberly from secret to everything.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I can't tell you what it means to me to reconnect with you like this and to hear the brilliance you're being out in the world. It's such an important time. Oh, thank you. And thank you for doing what you do. You're just such a light, such a joy. I appreciate you. Yeah. Well, folks, remember secret to everything.com. And I end this quote from Rumi. I'm a huge Rumi fan these days. Do you know what you are? You are a manuscript of a divine letter. You are a mirror reflecting a noble face. This universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself. Everything that you want, you are already that. Join me in this number one transformation conversation on Dare to Dream. Next week, my guest is Raquel Escobar Rios. She is a remote viewer. She's a psychic and she offers home space, relationship, business, organizational alignment. She is this amazing beauty from Spain, now living in London and doing exquisite work in the world. This is one of our young gifted healers, and I'm so excited to introduce you to her. For those who are loving the podcast and would like to see myself and my guest, and I highly recommend you do, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, like us, subscribe, and leave us a comment. I love hearing what you guys have to, that's a funny thing, hearing what you guys write, but reading what you guys write, I always get back to you and it means a lot. It really does. Um, you guys are kind and awesome. And I'm so glad you're on this dare to dream journey. Take everything Kimberly showed us today, pull back the curtain on, this is big dreams. And if you wanna re-listen, enjoy the replay to that beautiful, really beautiful that was so powerful for me offering that she gave and re-listen and re-listen um, and go from there because this now
this is universal. This is way beyond this little space we've been taught to live in. So dare to dream and dare to create all your dreams into your reality. It's time.